welcome to In the Studio here at Davis Media Access. I'm your host, Emily Merton, and today joining me is president of the DHS Feminism Club, Willa Moffett. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you're here to talk about the, your club and what you guys are doing around campus right now. Um, so why don't you first introduce yourself, talk about when you got involved in Feminism Club and what your role is and what you guys do. So I first joined Feminism Club last year with my friend Anna Gao. We were kind of young, sophomores. Um, most of the people in the club were seniors, so we were kind of nervous, but we felt like we heard about it, I think, on the bulletin at, high at the high school and um, thought it was something that we kind of just wanted to do together. Um, so I, we went to like every meeting last year, um, but we, not a lot happened. We didn't really do that many events. Um, and then as the year progressed and senior, the seniors left, the club kind of fell apart. So this year, I kind of in the beginning of the year when you can start opening up new clubs, I decided to fill out the paperwork to make Feminism Club happen again because last year they'd never filled out a continuing club application. So I did that and then kind of made myself the president because awesome. there was really no yeah. one else. Yeah. Um, so what did you notice about Feminism Club last year that you kind of took note of and wanted to change about it this year? Um, well, I noticed is that we spent a lot of time talking about things, which is fine. Um, but also that nothing ever really happened. So like, by talking about things, do you mean talking about issues or talking yeah. about planning things and then never actually well, executing them? Both. We, well, we began there with like a lot larger club membership base. Um, we had, I don't even know. Maybe had like 20 people would come to a meeting and some different people different times. But that soon quickly kind of fell apart. and we. I remember one time when the Emma Watson he for she UN thing happened, we did a discussion. That didn't really go anywhere because only a couple people would talk, um, which is fine because they were just experimenting, I think. Um, but then we would talk about doing a movie night and then getting the funding for the movie night, and then that just never happened. And then it became May and then June and then school ended. So, mm -hmm. so has that changed this year? Um, I'd say it hasn't completely changed. We're still kind of... Because I think the problem is, is for a lot of people, we have had maintained a kind of the same number of members this year, which is really nice to see. But um, it's kind of hard for people to stop just talking and start doing things. Yeah. Well, what are you doing right now? You guys are doing something right now, yeah. right? Well, so yeah. Then we're do we're doing the um, supply drive for Empower Yellow, um, which is a domestic violence shelter in the area. I think they began in Davis. I think I'm not exactly sure. Um, there's a center in Woodland, um, and now I think they're actually opening a smaller center in Davis. Awesome. Um, so that one, I think, was good that we did it, and it wasn't even that hard to do. We just had to take initiative and make something happen. Awesome. So what do you have to do? So how, what kind of things are people fundraising? Like, what, how can you help? Is it money? Is it food? What is it? Yeah. Well, so you can donate money. You can go on their site, and they have some donate buttons. But because it's hard to ask high school students to just give money to things, we are doing the supply drive for like household um, goods and just supplies like things to help clean the bathroom or like feminine products, kind of towels, things like that, that are easy for a high school kid to just say, hey mom, can you buy this at the grocery store? And it's things you have in your house and it's things you would normally buy. So you just mm -hmm. pick up an extra item and then drop it off in a box. Yeah, great. So is there, is there any incentive for the high school kids to donate? Did you, how are you guys getting people to donate? Well, there's the incentive of doing something good. Yes, but, of course. <laughs> um, we also got into touch with the, one of the service clubs, CSF, um, on campus and had asked them if they would make it one of their projects and if and they make it a CSF event. Then if kids donate, they will count them as volunteer hours. And that's always something that kids are looking for. So I think that's really helped this year. And that's something we didn't do last year. And when there was actually a supply drive last year, but no one on campus donated. They had boxes at like the library, and a lot of members of the community did, um, which we haven't done this year because we have gotten donations at the high school. But so I think it does show that the CSF, I think, made a difference. Awesome. So do you have any other plans or hopes for the club in the future? Um, I'm hoping next year. I think I'll probably be president still, unless someone else decides they want to challenge it. I don't <laughs> really know how that system works, but um, I feel like everyone's pretty happy at this point. Um, I think next year, with the experience that I had this year, 
I'll be able to like figure out, okay, we need to start doing things earlier and planning ahead and maybe setting up some different projects lined up in the beginning of the year that'll happen at the end. Um, so for this year, I think we're just gonna continue being more of a social club where people, girls can just come and talk and share things because I think that's important too. Is totally. It's not that we're just eating lunch together, we are talking about issues and things that affect us in cl the classroom and other things that are going on in social media and things like and stuff like that. So that's great, like uh, totally, that's the whole point of Feathers as a Club is kind of coming together and talking about all the things that need to be changed and stuff. So how have you gotten, so at the beginning of the year, how did you get people to join? Did you just tell your friends? Did you, what did you do? Yeah, well I think I, I began with just telling friends that I knew. Um, and part of the club application process is you have to have 15 kind of student sponsors in a way. Just like writing down names of people that would potentially be in your club so that the ASB knows that there are people who actually want this to be a club on campus. And so I think a lot of those, most they're all girls I think actually. Um, <laughs> but I think they all I thought would want and most of them came from there. And then from there I told other friends of mine and their friends told their friends. And I think we put an announcement in the bulletin which got some girls to come on their own. Awesome. So um, how do the girls kind of stay together through like social media and stuff? Because I know that plays a huge role in everyone's life. <laughs> and that can also be kind of a tool for raising awareness for the club and raising awareness for other issues. Yeah. So we, um, I created an email at dhsfeminismclub at gmail.com just as kind of a way we can get in touch with things like Empower YOLO or when we bought our t-shirts. Um, and that kind of has some of our, just on the Google Drive, we keep some sort of supplies and lists of names. And then we created a, a iMessage uh, through Apple f iPhones to uh, keep in contact. And then I can text that and say, oh, there's a meeting or do this. Or then some other girls will sometimes be like, oh, there's this thing that just happened. This is something we should talk about. Um, and then to kind of reach to a group larger than just the members of the club, um, I made an Instagram account so, and then we have followers who are mostly in the club, but there's also a lot of other kids who just go to the high school. Or there's met some of the followers were in the club last year before there was an Instagram. And it's kind of a way to keep everyone connected. Awesome. So have you posted about the drive on the Instagram? I have not, but I've... I just <laughs> gave you that awesome idea. That is you gotta idea. post. <laughs> yeah. You got to post about it. Um, so when does this drive end at the high school? Um, it ends March 30th, technically. Um, I mean... If anyone ran up to me with donations in April, I'm sure I'd be willing to take them. But um, we kind of just made it March the time frame because it's Women's History Month and it's good to have just a general start and end date for things like this. Um, so awesome. can, yeah. So it's Women's History Month. This is like yeah. the perfect month for <laughs> your club. What kind of other things are you doing other than this drive? Um, yeah, so kind of Women's History Month, I think we decided like, oh, we should really do stuff. So we've been doing kind of everything we've done this year has actually happened kind of in March. Because um, on International Women's Day, which was March 8th, we sort of got this sort of luncheon, or actually it was on March 9th, but that's okay, um, this sort of potluck luncheon thing where we just had a bunch of different people brought food and we just sort of hung out um, kind of to celebrate. And then one of the girls in the club who's the vice president, she made these posters that had information about different famous women in history. And the other day we put those up around campus. Awesome. Um, and then we're planning on putting some announcements in the bulletin to kind of promote the club, but also just kind of promote women and feminism in general. That's awesome. So these wonderful <laughs> shirts are so cool. And someone from the club made them, right? Uh, yeah, so Sophie Agox, she's been really helpful with ever, everything because um, she's really into art and stuff. So she helped design the shirt. She helped me contact Ink, Ink Monkey and order them. And then she also helped me d design these different like pins that we, everyone has on their backpacks. That's so great. What, what kind of pins? What do they say? Okay, so there's one that has a picture of Barack Obama wearing like a Versace shirt and holding a Slurpee. <laughs> I think it's Photoshop, but it says, not a feminist, Barry's judging. <laughs> um, and then there's a picture of Malala Yousafzai and it says, girl power. And then the last one is of Hermione Granger and says, smart girls are feminists, I think, yeah. That's awesome. So just kind of a fun thing 
and you can see people in the hallways wearing it see, on their backpack, and you're like, hey, that's someone that's who so supports great. our club. Yeah, and so the goal is to get people to come and then hopefully yeah. promote a bigger cause like Empower Yellow. Do you know about any other organizations that you might want to be in touch with in the future? Um, I don't, actually. Um, cause I think, the to me, the obvious one was Empower Yellow. Um, but I mean, if there are others. Yeah, totally. Um, I think we could all kind of work together and try to find some ways to promote women's rights and help women all over because there are so many different ways that we can do that. Yeah, well, so I think it's great. Yeah, I think that was the biggest goal of the club at school isn't necessarily to have everyone join Feminism Club, but that to have people understand the feminist message and that it's kind of all inclusive, it doesn't have to be a dirty word. Because um, I think there's a lot of misconceptions, even in a pretty liberal town like Davis, yeah. about what being a feminist means. Definitely. And so, like, on your posters around campus, the, those are the kinds of things you want to promote, right? Is mm -hmm. Because the people who are in the club are the ones that already exactly. know the true message of feminism. So what kind of things do you hope to promote about the ideal of feminism? Um, just that it's not... It's not, it can be complicated at times, depend, but in general, it's just about equality um, and understanding and that it doesn't have to be a conflict between men and women or different types of women and that you just, everyone, kind of a general female-focused message of equality. Definitely. So, and like coming together like this, it's not just about your opinions of things. It's also about, you know, we can raise money or raise um, items for women who are suffering and you know who are experiencing domestic abuse or other issues and that's wonderful that you are able to help out in some way with that so I'm so glad that you were able to be here and talk about it okay. well thank you yeah um, thank you so much for being here today um, if you want to know more about Feminism Club, they do have an Instagram page. What's that Instagram? Uh, DHS Feminism Club. And if you want to donate to Empower YOLO, you can go to the drive. You can um, find a little box if you go to DHS, or if you are in the Davis area and you would like to donate, you can go to Davis High School campus and find a box. Is there any way, like, do you know any classrooms that have the box? Yes, yeah, so, uh, room L28, which is upstairs in the library, and P20, I'm pretty sure, which is an English classroom. Awesome. In the P building. Yeah, and if you're in CSF, you'll get CSF hours for that. But if not, it would be great for you to donate anyway. And if you cannot make that time frame, you can donate any time to Empower Yellow or find Willa at school or come to Feminism, Feminism Club. When is it? Uh, Wednesdays at lunch. Yeah, come to Feminism Club. It'll be an awesome time. So um, you could also go to EmpowerYolo.org to find out more about what Empower YOLO does, and hopefully Feminism Club will reach out to some other um, organizations and we'll be able to help a little bit more. So thanks so much for being here today. I'm your host, Emily Merton. If you want to know more about Davis Media Access, you can go to dctv.davismedia.org. Thanks so much for watching.